Welcome to History of Health Information Technology in the U.S., History of Mobile Computing. This unit focuses on the evolution of mobile computing in the practice of medicine. In this presentation, we focus on the use of mobile devices by physicians. We recognize that other clinicians and even patients can benefit from using mobile devices to support care. However, for the most part, patients and other clinicians are outside the scope of this presentation. The objectives for this unit, History of Mobile Computing, are to discuss the developments in mobile computing that have enabled portable computers to be used in healthcare settings. List the benefits of using mobile computers in the clinical setting and discuss how these benefits have developed over time. Give examples of three applications for mobile computers in healthcare. Gadgets are getting smaller. Practically all electronic devices we use today are smaller, lighter, and more mobile than their predecessors. Everything from cell phones to GPS units to personal music players, TV sets, and laptops are taking advantage of the miniaturization of electronic circuits, processors, and batteries. Smaller, more portable computers made it possible to incorporate their use in clinical settings where providers are constantly on the go. Having to be tethered to a desktop computer makes using an electronic system very difficult at the point of care. In the context of this lecture, when we refer to mobile devices, we are talking about handheld computers, tablets, smartphones, etc. Basically, any device that allows doctors or nurses the ability to access information or software applications wherever they are. In 1993, Apple Corporation launched the Newton Message Pad, a device that was clearly ahead of its time because it resembles the more popular devices in use today. Even though it wasn't very popular, the Newton's release marked the beginning of the mobile computing era. It took almost a decade until the growth of mobile devices such as the original Newton began selling at a significant pace. Devices including the Palm Pilot, the Sony Clie, and other popular devices of the early to mid-2000s were experiencing 17.8% annual increases in sales. By 2009, 17 million mobile devices were being sold worldwide annually. If I had to guess, many of you listening to this presentation probably own an iPhone or some other similar device. Clearly, mobile devices are increasingly very common. So, what type of software would be helpful on a physician's mobile device? The first are drug reference programs. Considering the sheer number of medications that a provider may prescribe in a given day and the increasing number of new drugs that keep coming to market, many physicians regularly check drug reference books. In the past, these books were dictionary-sized manuals that were not convenient to carry around. With the advent of mobile devices, every doctor and nurse can have up-to-date information available at their fingertips. Important information to look up may include the correct dose, route, or medical contraindications. Importantly, sometimes a given drug shouldn't be given while a patient is already taking a different drug. In such a case, an interaction may occur. Looking up a possible drug interaction is something that is done with the help of a drug reference program. 
Just like needing to look up drug information, doctors and nurses may need access to medical reference material about a given condition or symptom. This may include needing to look up the latest treatment recommendations for asthma, depression, or persistent cough. Another very useful purpose for mobile devices is the ability to perform medical calculations. Many drugs, especially for children or the elderly, need to be dosed according to the patient's weight. In such cases, having a handy calculator function can reduce the chances of errors. Being able to access or document patient information, or at least access information, is also very beneficial when on the go. Many times, patient lab reports or other information may not be physically available in the paper chart yet, but may be accessed electronically via a mobile device. Mobile devices can also provide guidance to clinicians about how to code a given patient encounter. Coding is important because based on the level of difficulty or amount of time a physician spends with a patient, a different code for billing purposes may be appropriate. Without some algorithm or computational assistance, it is possible for the provider to undercode, resulting in less reimbursement than they are entitled to. An obviously simple function available on a mobile device is the calendar feature. Physicians typically see many patients in a given day, and being able to keep track of appointments is helpful. After all, many of us use our smartphones for the exact same purpose. Lastly, mobile devices can be used for clinical functions such as electronic prescribing. Clearly, many clinical functions lend themselves well to the handheld device platform. However, electronic prescribing is particularly useful when pull-down menus and pre-selected lists of drugs make prescribing from the point of care effortless. Now that we know some of the reasons that physicians may want to use mobile devices in healthcare settings, let's examine their use of such devices. In 1995, a small study of physicians in Michigan found that a high percentage of physicians would be interested in carrying a mobile device to support their clinical responsibilities. A series of Harris Interactive Surveys of U.S. Physicians reported upon by Taylor and Lightman found that the number of physicians using mobile devices increased from 15% in 1999 to 26% in 2001. Several other studies of specific physician groups in 2001 found higher rates of mobile device use among internists at 47 percent and the highest rate among residents or physicians in training at 75 percent. By 2005, authors Minikimi and Brooks reported that 37% of physicians in Florida were using mobile devices to support clinical care. Today, the overall rate is even higher, but we are certainly not at the level of interest in mobile devices reported in 1995. So, the main disconnect between the 90% of doctors who in 1995 said they would consider using a mobile device and the 37% in 2005 who actually did has something to do with the drawback of early devices. We take for granted the fact that today our smartphones fit neatly in our pockets. Earlier versions of these devices were not as sleek. They were relatively large compared to today's pocket-sized computers. In addition, early devices were slow and had little memory and ability to multitask, making them less desirable. 
Another big issue was battery life. For a busy clinician to find maximum use from a device, it needed to last all day on a single charge. In the clinics, there is no time for the downtime associated with needing to recharge batteries. Early devices only lasted an hour or two with continuous usage, clearly not acceptable for an 8 to 10 hour shift. Lastly, before the evolution of functional keyboard and other input mechanisms, early devices relied on poor handwriting recognition for data input. This made early devices very cumbersome to use. Since then, modern devices have overcome most of the issues associated with slow processors, the inability to multitask, insufficient battery life, and, of course, no longer relying on handwriting recognition. Once physicians started using mobile devices at higher rates, researchers began documenting the benefits of this use. In a review by Liu et al., several benefits of using mobile devices were outlined. The first benefit was in terms of cost savings. Several researchers were able to calculate the cost savings associated with using mobile devices. In some cases, the cost savings were significant. Several researchers have found that mobile devices, especially if equipped with decision support tools, helped clinicians better practice and learn evidence-based medicine. It has also been shown that when clinicians incorporate the use of their mobile device with their patients, for example, showing the patient a diagram depicting their condition, patients are better able to understand what is wrong with them. Being able to access information without having to run back to a centralized location makes clinical decision-making more efficient. If you count up the times someone has to run back and forth from a desktop computer or to a reference library, that amount of wasted time could have been used to see another patient. As discussed previously, utilizing medical calculators or some other decision support tools, such as pointing out drug interactions or contraindications, can help prevent errors. Lastly, there is a growing body of literature that has found that the clinical outcomes of patients can be improved when their doctors have access to more and more complete information via a mobile device. So, what are some physician characteristics associated with the use of a mobile device in medical practice? First, not surprisingly, younger doctors are more likely to use mobile devices. This is similar to the fact that younger people in society are more likely to use electronic gadgets in general. Medical students and physician residents or doctors still in training are also more likely to use mobile devices, but those in training tend to be younger as well. Many studies also found that there were no differences by gender in terms of whether males or females are more likely to use mobile devices in medical practice. In one particular study that focused on physicians in Florida, Minakemi and colleagues found that overall, family physicians were not more likely to use a mobile device. However, when they did, they utilized a more robust set of features. This may be because primary care physicians see a wide range of patients, and for the device to be useful, it needs to have a lot of capabilities. 
Lastly, one study found that doctors in urban settings were more likely than doctors in rural settings to report using a mobile device. It is interesting to note that the relative inexpensiveness of mobile devices and the lack of need for an IT infrastructure makes the benefits of such a device applicable to rural and urban settings alike. This concludes History of Mobile Computing. In summary, mobile devices were originally seen as a way to get medical software and access to reference material in the hands of clinicians without the need for a robust health IT infrastructure. Mobile devices were cheap, easy to use, and as their screens got clear and their batteries longer lasting, many physicians began using them in the medical practice. As our healthcare system moves to ubiquitous EHR systems and universal health information exchange, it's likely that mobile devices will become networked computers, able to access real-time information, enabling improved decision-making in the clinics.